Welcome back guys, it's the Tightwad and it's February here in Georgia. It may be 70 degrees outside today, but it is not time for the grass to green up. You may be wondering why my mower is already out of the shop. I prefer to use this time of year to get my lawn equipment ready for the spring cutting season. Once the grass starts greening up, my time gets limited. So I'm gonna show you guys some things that you can do at home to get your lawn mower and other lawn equipment ready for the spring season. Let's get started. This video is part two of a three-part series. In part two, we will be discussing how to perform general engine maintenance. I will show you how to change your spark plugs, change your oil, including the oil filter, change your fuel filter, and change the air filter on your lawnmower. These concepts can be applied to any motor on any lawnmower that you may own. For part one and part three, click the links at the end of this video. I picked up this engine maintenance kit from my local big box store. And I decided to go this route because it gave me everything I needed to show you guys uh, the proper way to maintain your engine. It has the fuel filter, the engine oil, the Kohler brand filter, uh, oil filter, the air filter, and the spark plugs all in one kit. Instead of trying to piece and part it together, uh, for this video's purposes, I did buy this. Uh, you could find your individual parts cheaper. If you maintain your engine properly every year, you may only need one or two of these components, so sometimes it's cheaper not to buy the full kit. But it is available if you decide you need it. Your mower needs to be able to breathe freely in order to function properly. On this particular mower, the air filter is hidden under this trap door. You can usually find it mounted somewhere on the mower, and it's either going to be a pull tab like this, or it may be one screw that's easy to remove. The reason why it's easy to remove is because you should inspect it frequently. I didn't inspect mine at the end of last season, so let's do it now. When removing your filter, remove it very carefully so that you don't spill any of the debris into the engine compartment. You can see my filter is very dirty and I'll actually replace it this season. This particular mower has a pre-filter which is made of foam and then the true filter is a paper filter protected by uh, an aluminum screen. You can clean the pre-filter using soapy water, use a good uh, detergent like Dawn dish detergent, uh, Dawn dish soap, clean it, wring it out and let it completely air dry. You should use motor oil, the same type that you use for your mower, to grease it back up and put it back on your paper filter. Your paper filter can simply be knocked off on the ground like this to remove any debris or dirt that's been built up, but don't use any pressurized air compressors or anything like that to clean it out because it will damage the air filter. Also, don't get it wet. It's not supposed to get wet or uh, you're not supposed to use any kind of detergents. So after the first year, maybe two years, you can replace it with a new one. Even though this is a brand new filter with a pre-cleaner on it, the pre-cleaner has not been oiled. So I need to make sure I remove this and lubricate my new pre-cleaner with my engine oil. I'll do that, wring it out, replace it over the air filter, and put it back in the mower before I start the engine. Never run your engine without the air filter properly in place. The next thing we need to do is change the oil. I can see my dipstick here, but I haven't changed the oil in the last season and a half. I bought this midway through a season. So I'm going to show you that my particular model has a hose that comes down from the engine itself and down under the mower right here. So all I have to do is remove the nut on the end of this and drain it into a oil safe container. Uh, this is a kid's play bucket. The oil is warm but not hot. So I'll dump it into here first and then I will transfer it to my oil pan. The reason why I do that is because my oil pan sits so low to the ground, it sometimes splatters and makes a mess. Another thing some people recommend is if your hose is not long enough, insert joke here, you can cut, I used a creamer bottle and cut off a spout for it that'll stick up far enough that you can re uh, remove the nut. Then you can lower it over it and guide it into the container of choice. So let's get started. Since my hose is long enough to reach over the top of my pan, I'm not going to use 
the plastic bottle technique. Plus, I want to have a better angle for my camera. I'm going to use two pairs of vice grips to remove the nut on my old drain hose. Once you get it loose enough with your channel locks, you can simply use your hand to loosen it and be prepared because the oil is going to start draining out immediately. Make sure that you catch your drain plug. Uh, while that's draining, I'll show you something else I do. I like to use a pad that I got from the hospital, actually. I have some nurse friends, and they are for human fluids uh, that they use um, primarily in the pediatric or not pediatric, but the uh, labor and delivery services. And they do a great job of catching any excess oil. Uh, I will let this drain while I work on some other things on the mower. So I'll let this drain until there's nothing coming out anymore, and then I will show you the rest of the processes. It's been about five minutes. And you can see a little bit of oil is still dripping out, but I have my cover down, so I'm not worried about it. I'm going to remove my bucket of oil, and now I can replace the plug back into the drain hose. Remember, it's standard thread, so righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. I'm going to finger tighten it first, and then I'll take my channel locks and make sure it's good and snug so that we don't have any oil leaks when we start refilling our mower with oil. Once the engine oil has been drained from the mower, we need to replace the oil filter, which is right here. I really don't like the location of the oil filter on these mowers because it is side mounted, which makes it difficult to empty it without making a huge mess. It's also difficult to replace because the new filter recommendation is to fill the fil filter with oil and lubricate the ring before screwing it back on. As you can tell in this case, if I fill the filter with oil to let it soak in as it recommends, and then tilt it sideways to install it, the oil is gonna spill all over the place. Ideally, you have a fuel filter wrench which looks like, which looks like this, or a strap wrench, which works well as also. Uh, with this one, I simply put it on a ratchet socket set, and when I pull down, you'll see it starts to move. I don't want to loosen it too much because I'm going to show you a trick that I use to prevent too much oil spillage on these side mounted filters. The camera's at a very awkward angle right now, but I'm going to do my best to show you my technique. First, I loosen the oil filter to get it loose enough that I can get in there with my hand. I'm going to remove the filter wrench and I'm going to use a Ziploc bag. I'm going to slide the Ziploc bag over the filter and all the way up as close as I can under the cavity and pull it tight. Now, as I remove the filter, hopefully the bag catches more oil than spills. So it's a little awkward unspilling the filter, but it's definitely worth in the long run. See that oil is already beginning to fill the bag. And you can see we'll have minimal drippage there, but the oil filter is in the bag with most of the oil, saving a huge mess. Now I'm just gonna place a rag under here to catch the remaining oil that's dripping out while I prep the new filter. I have my new oil filter here, and I'm gonna place it on my rag here so that I can easily fill it up with oil. And you'll wanna pay close attention to what I do here. I fill it up. as the recommendations stay, to the bottom of the threads. And I smooth an oil coating onto the filter ring here. And I'm gonna let it sit there and soak into the oil filter for a little while. It wants me to leave the oil filter full of oil, but since it's a side-mounted oil filter, that causes a problem. The main reason why you put oil into these filters before you start screwing them back on is so that you can let the paper filter that's inside here soak in oil. It makes the engine work less hard to do it after the process has been completed. While I'm waiting on this, I'm going to 
wet my pre-filter with oil and massage it in. Just put some of the same motor oil on it. I'm massaging it in there, making sure I've got it fully covered. Then I'm going to wring it out over my oil filter so any excess drips down in there. This is ready to go back over our paper filter now and be reinstalled in the mower. So I'm going to set it to the side for now because we're dealing with the messy part. Now that it's had time to soak in there, I'm going to take the oil and pour it back into the bottle, the excess oil, so that when I go to screw this oil filter onto the mower, I have less mess. Now the new filter has been finger tightened in place and I'll use my ratchet to tighten it down, not overly tight, but snug onto the mower. With the new oil filter in place and ensuring that your drain plug has been replaced, it's time to add oil. You add oil in through the dipstick compartment so you can remove your dipstick put a funnel in and pour in your oil. I'll start adding oil to the mower and I will put a quart and a half and then check the dipstick to see how much more needs to be added. After the first quart and a half, I noticed that the dipstick was on the low area of the fill stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the remainder of the second quart and check again. With my pre-filter, properly oiled, I'm going to slide it back on the paper filter, the new paper filter. I'm going to open my compartment here and place it back in place. There's only one way these can go. That's why they're shaped like they are. But make sure it's properly seated when you get it in there. The next thing that came in our kits are spark plugs. This particular mower is a twin engine mower. So it has a spark plug on this side and another spark plug on this side. We'll remove those and check them and see if I need to replace the spark plugs. Spark plugs have a protective cover on the outside of them. It's also how the electrical current gets transferred to the spark plug, but it just pulls right off. Now you need a deep socket that'll fit the spark plug and go all the way down in there and remove it from the engine compartment. I have my socket in place, put my ratchet on it and adjust it and these are standard threads, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. Go back on there a little bit more. Unscrew it the rest of the way, and you'll see that it's very corroded on the end. It is still working fine, so I could leave it, but since I have the other ones now, I'll go ahead and put them on instead. and they just screw right back into the hole. All right. Then you just take the cap and secure it back down over the top. Make sure you feel it go all the way on and you're good to go. Repeat the process on the other side and your spark plugs are changed. This is one of the easier things to do on a mower if you have the correct tools. The last step of engine maintenance is to replace the fuel filter. Here's the model number that came with the engine maintenance kit and you can see it goes just like this. Uh, it matches the other one but the other one uh, is very dark and dirty from deposits build up from the contaminants in the fuel, so you can tell it's definitely time to change it. We'll go through steps for how to get this done in the most efficient and clean way. I'm gonna to try to maintain visibility for you as much as possible, but I'm gonna take a, a shop rag and wrap it around one end of the hose, and I'm gonna use some vice grips to clamp down on the hose to cut off the flow of fuel. That'll make it a little less messy and the purpose of the rag is so that I don't crimp the hoses and cause any damage but I got that one clamped off, clamped off and then I have another rag for the other side and I'm gonna leave the excess of the rag 
hanging down on this side to catch any fuel that spills once the hoses have been removed from the filter. So both hoses are clamped now and you can see that I have two little clips, one on each side. So I'll remove the clips by, they're just pinch clips, so I use my needle nose pliers. Just squeeze them together and work the clamp, squeeze them together and work the clamp back away from the filter. And I got that one off and I'll do the same thing on this other side. Hopefully my fuel lines are still in good shape so I don't have to replace them. But if you do happen to have cracked fuel lines, you will definitely notice when you start removing these because it'll likely break off. And you can get new fuel lines from any auto parts store, so it's not a big deal. You can order them online directly from the mower um, website, or you can get them from, like I said, an auto parts store. Now the fuel line, the fuel filter simply wiggles out of the line. You see it's starting to come off now. So I'm just wiggling them back and forth, and it should continue to come. If you can somehow prop the fuel line up, even though it's clamped, it'll still have a little bit of fuel coming through and that'll prevent it from backflowing or spilling out all over the place. And your fuel filter itself will have fuel in it as well. So go ahead and remove it and put it somewhere away from flammable material. And you can look at mine and see that there are contaminants all throughout it so it definitely was time to change so we'll get the new one installed you need to remember the orientation of the fuel filter so now my so now I'll replace the fuel filter and the narrower end went this way so it should snap right in and the flat end went on the end going towards the motor so now that I have that back in place, I can take my pliers. And move my clamps back to their previous location. Unclamp the vice grips. Use my rags to clean off any spilled fuel to prevent any kind of fire. Um, since this is close to the battery, sometimes you'll have some sparking and you definitely don't want it to spark. And the new fuel filter is in place and I need to loop my fuel line back in here to keep it off the muffler. And we are good to go. The last step after performing engine maintenance is to make sure that the mower starts first of all and then check for leaks. You need to run your mower for about five minutes to allow the oil to get into all compartments of the motor. To fill up that fuel filter, remember we emptied some of it out so we could screw it on without mess, but also so it can permeate throughout the whole system. So I'm going to crank it up and check for my leaks. To see part one and part three of this three-part video series, click the links you see on the screen now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to reply. Hope you guys have a great day.